Hi, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge. Today I have another tutorial on how to fix early lockup on a liner knife or a liner lock or a frame lock knife. So come on down to the bench top if you want to take a look at how uh, my way of doing it happens. Uh, I'm not saying my way is the best way, it's the way that I know and it works pretty good. So come on down. Okay, first off, what do I need to get this done? You need some tape for safety. You need a marker, uh, preferably a, you know, this kind of size, midpoint or larger, not too terribly large, you don't need. You'll need some kind of screwdrivers. In my case, on this one, this is an NLAN, and I need this special NLAN tool. You can get it at GearBest for less than five bucks. Um, you'll need some file. Uh, this kit came in a kit like this. I don't need all of this. I'll just need one of them. Uh, one with a flat, one of the flat sides, the rounded ones, not so much. So you need a file. Um, you might need some Goo Gone or something like this if your tape leaves residue on your knife. Um, that's about all you really need. So to get started, we get some tape and that's too much. That's all I need because I just want to go over the cutting edge here, gently holding it on there. You know, just enough, just enough to stay safe. All right, so I close it part way, unlock the knife. <laughs> My dog's trying to jump up on the chair there, and that's the little noise you hear bouncing around over there. I don't know if you hear it or not, maybe you don't. Okay, and then I got to push the uh, bolt through. There you go, it's come through. Notice the bolt has that flat side there. Is this even recording? Yes, it is recording, good. Sorry about that. Okay, and now I hold the liner lock down with my thumb right here, you can barely see it. And I pull the knife blade out, take the washer away, get the other washer out of the way, we're all done. Take my marker out, and what I want to do is mark up this face here. Oh, sorry, I was off camera. I want to mark up the face that mates with the liner lock. Okay, like that. Then I want to take one of the fine files that I have, a, a flat surface of one of them and since this edge is where the liner lock hits first and it moves across to the other side I want to take a little bit off of this leftmost edge not I don't want to take off material from the whole surface because then I might take off too much and the liner lock will just be able to slide right past we don't want that so just slide the file across I'm just at a slightly greater angle than the angle of this uh, ramp here. Not too much of an angle, just slightly greater. Okay. Uh, this one's not the best choice for it. This round one has got a wider surface on this side. There we go, that's a better knife for it, a better file for it. With this file, I'm just sliding one way. There we go. And I just want to take off just a little bit here. 
it's very easy to take off too much metal. If you take off too much metal doing this, the lock will go right across and won't lock up at all. So there you go. You can still see some of the blue on there from the marker, which is a good thing, which means I have not touched that space at all. I've just taken a little bit of metal off the leading edge and a little bit off the outer edge. Uh, see, they use a much larger wheel than this, but they're using a rotating wheel, a big one, to grind into that surface right there. So it is concave. It's not a flat surface from right to left. Some are. This one isn't. Some use a flat uh, file and file them down so it's perfectly level. That is probably the better way to do it. Most knives, though, especially lower cost ones, they use a disc that's rotating like this. And so that's why you've got a concave ramp. Okay, now we put it back together. Put the washer in place, just the one. Have the knife turned the right way so the blade closes in here. And that washer wants to come along. There we go. Holding it up so the washer's down there. So there you go. You can see the white washer, I think, just a little bit in the way there. I just used something round to uh, Gently move it to the middle. There you go. Now the hole's mostly clear. I locate the flat spot. The flat spot is to the back of the knife. And I, whoops, started moving. I start feeding this bolt through. I've got to hold the locker, the liner lock down. And just sort of wiggle this bolt into place. It, uh, it's a three-hand job. And now I just shove over the brass washer a bit further since it's in here now. And now I can pull it to the middle. Always making sure I maintain pressure on that bolt on the bottom or else it's just going to all fall apart. I might switch fingers and stuff, but I just keep putting pressure, downward pressure on there. Let's tap on it instead. Ah, that's all it took, a little tap, popped all the way through. Sometimes vibrations, just little vibrations, all that it takes. It doesn't line up quite right because I haven't tightened it up yet. All right, let's see how this works. Okay, it's not, it's not uh, very far over, but that wasn't a very hard open. Okay, open that hard. And get that where the light is. There you can see it's almost with the locker arm all the way over to the knife. You can just do it this. I'm going to oil it too after I'm done this. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm just going to do nine or ten hard openings, just flicking it hard so it just really gets uh, seated in there. A new because it's got it's got a new it's got a new mating surface right now so you really want it to get seated well. When I first started buying Chinese brand knives, um, it wasn't even that long ago. Uh, my first four or five Enlands were just awesome. You know, they were the same kind of quality that I've been finding with the Ganzos. And uh, you know, out of the last five or six Enlands that I've received three or four of them have needed like some kind of just a little bit of an adjustment. The fit and finish hasn't been totally perfect on them like uh, the other ones were. And so I'm finding the, uh, what some people told me was that Enlands just have poor fit and finish. And I'm finding that, yeah, some of them do have poor fit and finish. I'll notice, I'll show you one more thing on this knife. If I can get the light to come on properly. There we go right there you see that that looks like a tiny wormhole just from the coloration of the the wood and stuff there i do have to remember this is a 15 dollars knife 
That being said, Ganzo makes $15 knives that have better fit and finish. But this shape, the first one I had of these is orange with orange G10 scales. And I just, I, I liked it so much that I ordered this second one with the wooden scales. And this is actually my primary carry, my most often carried EDC. Oh, the one with the G10 was, and I'm switching that into this rosewood one. I use that pouch. That's why I took the uh, clip off. I carry this in a pouch and not uh, in my pocket. I just like the shape of this knife so much. Um, I'm not terribly fond of, you know, 8 CR 13 MOV. Uh, you know, I would like this in a much better steel, but it is what it is. And at this price, you know, I EDC this thing. I treat it as rough as it needs to be treated because I'll do whatever it needs, to, needs doing with it. And when I have to replace it, I'll replace it. So there you go, guys. That's one way to adjust the liner lock. If you like this video, please hit like. Um, share this with your friends. If you're not comfortable doing these kinds of adjustments, um, changes, repairs, whatever you want to call it to a knife, then don't. Um, when you are comfortable enough to get started and doing things like this, choose the knife that you like the least. And even if it doesn't need to be fixed or anything, just take it apart and put it back together. And just the practice of taking a knife apart and put it back together, that will help you acquire the skills for when you want to do some repairs. So uh, don't do this on one of your best knives the first time out if you've never done this kind of uh, hands-on stuff. You know, a lot of guys are really handy that way, but there's other guys that just aren't. Always cut towards your chum and not your thumb. Bye now.